uh, now we've got a really interesting company, um, Asso VR. Justin Brad, who's a, a physician, uh, orthopedic surgeon, and uh, we have a great connection as Justin's cousin. John is sitting here somewhere. You are sitting here somewhere. Used to work for us. Worked for me. It's part of my business development team. So it's great to have the family back on stage. So uh, thanks for coming. Great to be. Hi everyone, my name is Justin Barad. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, as you said, and I'm the CEO and founder of Oso VR, a simulator, a simulator for orthopedic surgery. There's a critical issue today in the way we're As surgery becomes more and more complicated and resident work hours becomes restricted, surgeons are graduating from their training program, sometimes never having performed certain procedures. This is a phenomenon called the training gap. This is especially an issue in orthopedic, surgeon, uh, orthopedic surgery where we use very complex devices with hundreds of different, with hundreds of different co components. It's so complicated, in fact, that device companies spend millions of dollars a year on our uh, education. I've seen this problem firsthand uh, in a tibia fracture surgery. Uh, the attending surgeon was unfamiliar with the device we were using. So while he was operating, I was actually sitting at a computer reading the instruction manual out loud, uh, which added about an hour to the case and was a little scary, uh, to be honest. Uh, the kid was okay though, it went really well. Um, so what do we do about this? What do we do about the training gap? Well, surgical simulators seem like a great answer. However, they really haven't gotten a lot of traction. And this is because of their cost. They run up to about $250,000, and this is a price most hospitals are not willing to pay. So there's really a great opportunity in the market for a low cost, high quality surgical simulator, and that's us, Oso VR. We're a surgical simulator for orthopedic surgery. Uh, we're a software platform, but right now we're using uh, the Rift CV1 for our headset. We have the Oculus Touch controllers, which have been fantastic. Right now we're developing in Unity, but we're looking into Unreal a little bit. Um, and also we use NVIDIA GPUs for uh, development and uh, demo stations. So I'm going to show you a quick clip from our demo where we're uh, training the user on how to treat a tibia fracture. We do this with a titanium rod that's uh, malleted into the intramedullary canal. Um, so if you look here, uh, Matt's using the uh, simulator. He's uh, assembling the insertion handle here, just like you would in the operating room. Uh, he has to screw in this impaction handle here. And uh, we're designing all these interactions to be very close to real life. So you're going to see here he's actually uh, doing a screwing motion. We're going to jump ahead a little bit. The nail is now assembled. He's going to grab it, stick it into the tibia, and then uh, hammer it firmly into place, uh, just like you would in real life. <laughs> I hope none of you ever need the surgery. It's uh, even more brutal than it looks. <laughs> um, another feature we're really excited about is that we're able to recreate these complex surgical trays one-to-one -one in VR so that users can look at each individual component, see where it is in the tray, and see what it does. Our greatest asset is our team. It's a unique mix of medical and VR expertise. So in addition to being an orthopedic surgeon, I have a background in biomedical engineering. I work for medgadget.com, a medical technology news blog, and I also work on the side as a medical VR consultant. Matt Newport, our CTO and lead developer, uh, 15 years of game development experience, and he also has a degree in psychology, which surprisingly is very important for VR interaction design, understanding what the user is going to want to do when they're in your simulation. Blair Scott is our lead modeler, and Brady Evans is another orthopedic surgeon that does our business development with his uh, MBA from Harvard. Our target users are orthopedic surgeons, but also surgical techs and nurses and device company representatives. So far, user feedback has been phenomenal. Nelson Suhu, who is the residency program director at UCLA, says it has incredible potential, and we blew Frank Petrigliano's mind, which I was really happy about. He's a great shoulder surgeon, by the way. Our customers are medical device companies. This is a fantastic opportunity for us as a company because the existing paradigm in orthopedic surgery is that device companies pay for our education. So this allows us as a company to be more product focused as opposed to having a very large sales force and having to approach a bunch of different hospitals. The market looks very good for orthopedic devices, about $20 billion estimate in 2012 and estimated to be $40 billion in 2019. Currently, the surgical simulation market is about a billion dollars. We foresee a lot of growth in this market with a decreased barrier to entry thanks to all the advances in VR and GPU technology. So where are we now? We have a usable demo that we invite you all to try. We have the uh, Oculus Touch controllers, as I said, which is really awesome. You have to try it out. The next steps for us as a company is we're in talks with uh, several major medical device manufacturers to do some workable pilot uh, projects. And uh, we're also talking with UCLA about possibly doing a clinical validation study. 
We're looking to raise the seed round in uh, Q4 of 2016 to improve our product and uh, grow our company. So that's it, we're Oso VR. We're a surgical simulator for orthopedic surgery and uh, we're ready for some questions. All right, thank you. Thank you.